Indie games are my favorite thing about this industry and one of the most anticipated indie games of the year has finally hit the market. Donut County is a simple but oddly satisfying physics puzzle game where you gobble up items into an ever growing hole. I was so excited for this game that I bought it and played through its entirety in just a couple of hours after downloading and I can honestly say that I enjoyed every single minute of it. This story based interactive adventure by Ben Esposito has been in the making for over 6 years, however there's a whole lot more to this game than meets the eye. After playing it I decided to delve a little deeper into what makes the game what it is and how it became the finished article that we see today. Hi, my name is Adrian for Practical Gaming, and before you boot up your PC and try to get that down bike down that tiny little hole, I'm going to share with you six Donut County facts that you may not know about. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. You ready? Let's get it. Number 1. Same game, different name. Before Donut County was in fact Donut County, it was originally a side project SBC had worked on called Kachina back in 2012. The name Kachina is a spirit being in the religious beliefs of the Pueblo people, and Kachina rituals are practiced by the Hopi, Zuni, Hopi Tiwa, and certain Carissan tribes. SBC had drew inspiration from this when he saw Kachina dolls in a roadside gift shop and decided to implement this in his game. This idea was brought to Indicate 2012 and he was approached by Indifon to work on a project full time. However, the use of the name Kachina would later land himself in trouble. On the original website for the game, SBC uses the term Hopi Folklore when describing the game. A later blog post, however, made by Debbie Reese on American Indians in Children's Literature responds to this saying, Esposito and the Indicate people who selected it as an official selection must not know that teepees and totem poles have nothing to do with the Hopi people. They obviously have no idea what Kachinas mean to the Hopi people, and they also likely have no idea that calling the religious traditions of an indigenous people folklore is derogatory. She called on him to change the game as it was seen as a poor representation of the Hopi people. Esposito later realised that, after undergoing some pretty poor research about the Hopi people, he was telling a story that he didn't know one that wasn't intended for him to hear and it wasn't his story to tell. Changing it to the game we now see today. Number 2. Kanemaru meets Esposito This game had many inspirations, one of which oddly includes Bruce Springsteen, with Esposito saying his songs are about specific places like the New Jersey Turnpike or Asbury Park, places that are super rich in meaning to him. However, throughout development, Donut County was heavily likened to Kanemaru Damacy, a popular third-person puzzle action video game developed and published by Namco for the PlayStation 2. You can see where the comparisons lie with Kanemaru Damacy putting you in charge of a ball that grows in size as you collect stuff, and Donut County being a game where you gobble up anything and everything you can get your hands on. It's already an honour to be compared to such a staple of the gaming industry, but Donut County has even gained sort of a stamp of approval from the developer of Kanemaru, Keita Takahashi. When talking to Vox.com prior to launch, Ben Esposito says, he saw it pretty early on, he was like, ah, that's okay. He's not too easy to impress, I'll just put it that way. Maybe not the glowing praise Esposito was looking for, but he definitely acknowledges the potential of the game, which in its own way is a win. Number 3. From Twitter Trolls to Game Mechanics While the game has been compared to Katamari Damacy, the idea of a hole in the ground came from a tweet from a Peter Molyneux parody account. Peter Molyneux is a game designer whose reputation in the video game community is near legendary for his work on Fusion and Dungeon Keeper, but is probably more well known for his involvement in the Fable series. But as previously stated, it was his parody account who tweeted, you play a hole, you move around an environment making certain elements fall into correct targets at the right time. Sound familiar? While it wasn't exactly him who typed it, it did end up proving a base for a prototype of a game which ended up becoming Donut County. Funny how one little tweet could lead to all of this. Life is strange, isn't it? Number 4. These donuts are made for Duncan. The game currently takes place in a donut shop in Los Angeles. We know how the idea of the hole came about, but why donuts and why in LA? The answer to that lies in his growing up. Esposito was a native New Yorker who grew up on chain donut shops like Dunkin Donuts, and it's safe to say that he became pretty obsessed with them. However, in LA, where he moved later on, there wasn't a single Dunkin Donuts until 2014. LA is filled with mom and pop donut shops that change depending on the neighborhood. Esposito became obsessed with the donut culture in LA and emphasizes that while he has brand loyalty to Dunkin Donuts, he loves LA more and tries to emphasize this in his game. There are light parallels to the gentrification of LA donut shops, with the introduction of Dunkin Donuts and this one donut shop taking over and eating up the entire town with a single hole. This is just one of the little nuances in the game but tried to make the game resemble LA, but if you didn't notice them, the big raccoon letters in the style of the iconic Hollywood sign is pretty much the dead giveaway. Number 5. OK Google Shazam The Song One of the things that stood out about this game isn't just a beautiful for aesthetic, but the upbeat and inviting soundtrack. However, this soundtrack wasn't composed by a well-known game composer or found off of royalty free websites. It was created by SBC's friend, Daniel Questner. Questner does research and development in Ocean Optics, which composed in his spare time and sent SBC to whatever he came up with. Both SBC and Questner were trying to make an LA beat scene inspired soundtrack, 
whilst also trying to keep the cute aspect of the game intact. To do this, we can hear the use of the ukulele in multiple tracks, which ended up being a challenge as they tried to keep in mind the boom of the electronic production of music in the noughties, which is a big part of LA music culture. The full soundtrack can also be found on Spotify and GOG.com if you want to listen to it in your spare time. Number 6. This is really my side hustle. Esposito has been involved in a wide range of games, perhaps more famously for his work in the Sonic Dreams collection, which is the single creepiest game known to man. However, had fate handed him another hand, there is a chance that Esposito may have never have even become a game designer and the world would never have seen Donut County. As most of these stories start out, he saw game development as more of a hobby than a career path early on, taking part in game jams in college but not really looking to go any further than that. However, that all changed in a job interview for a web design position he took, where the interviewer said, it seems like you're really interested in video games, I'm going to do you a favour and not hire you. You should try to pursue games because it seems like that's what you really want to do. This may be a bit of a stretch to say that the interview is the reason for his career, but it definitely gave him the push he needed to pursue something he truly loves and create a game as good and as enjoyable as Donut County. And those are my 6 facts about Donut County that you may not know about. Remember to leave a like, share, comment, subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.